Good afternoon, Cornerstone Baptist Church, and any visitors dropping in, welcome to you as well. We are preparing for Sunday's message in Matthew 16 with Peter's confession, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let's look at where this confession takes place. So the first thing we see is that it takes place in Caesarea Philippi, where my cursor is at. Jesus had been over in Tyre and Sidon, where he saw the great Canaanite woman who approached him as the son of David, loaded theological language. He baited her theology by <clears throat> talking about <clears throat> how he was not to take the food that was meant for the children. He was sent to minister to the lost house of Israel, and he was not to take the children's food and give it to the dogs, and she took the bait. She replied very well, even the dogs get crumbs at the table. We went from there down to the Decapolis and the south and east edge of the Sea of Galilee, where, uh, there, where it was a Gentile region, and Jesus fed 4,000 Gentiles with seven hampers full left over. Our understanding from chapter 15 is that uh, Gentile missions is secondary, but it is abundant. Second does not mean less. Uh, it, it, there is a priority of Israel because God keeps his word to Abraham. And, uh, and yet there is a love for all the nations of the world as seen in that feeding. Then he goes to Magdala on the, uh, on the northeast corner of the Sea of Galilee. He encounters some Pharisees who would like to see a sign. And he said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks for a sign. In today's text now, he uh, leaves that area. He goes up to Caesarea Philippi with the disciples. This is a very Gentile Roman area. In fact, uh, if you go there with us next year, we will take you to this grotto. This is an area of pagan worship. And, and it was just a very Gentile pagan area. Why would Jesus go there? He went there to be alone with his disciples. He had something very important to tell them about his departure. And today's text really warms up to all of that. Let's look at today's text. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? That's really what this whole chapter is about. Um, and uh, leading up to this, when the Pharisees wanted a sign, and he said, you need to see the signs of the times, and, and uh, none will be given to you except the sign of Jonah. And so that's the three days, three nights in the belly of the earth for, for the Messiah. Anyway, in verse 14, they said, some say you say that John the Baptist, you are John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter nails it. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answers him with a blessing or actually stating that he is blessed for understanding this. Uh, notice in verse number 18, he said, Upon this rock I will build my church. Uh, the, the, the sayings of Jesus are very difficult, and we're going to encounter that this week. What does he mean? What rock? Uh, Peter the rock? Uh, the, the, the confession that Peter just uttered? What, what exactly does he mean here? And, uh, and he says, The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, the gates of hell not prevailing against the rock, the confession. Uh, the confession that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. Uh, what are the gates of hell? Well, hell here is Hades, and it could be the gates of the grave. Uh, Jesus could be speaking of the fact that the grave will not hold him. He is about, in just a few sentences, to tell the disciples, and Peter will be most scandalized, that he is going to die uh, and uh, for the sins of mankind. And so uh, that, that perhaps is part of the assurance here. Anyway, verse 19 I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind in earth shall be bound in heaven. Is this papal authority? Uh, we don't see that in Acts 15 when there's a big question before the church. We don't see Peter behaving like a pope. Uh, perhaps Jesus is saying, what you are doing here is an eternal work. And I better, um, oop, I can't uh, adjust the, uh, I'm sorry, my, my picture is going to cover up some of the, uh, some of the text here. Um, but perhaps he's just telling him that, uh, that his work uh, is an eternal work. Our work is an eternal work. What we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Those we uh, share this rock, this testimony with, uh, will be saved eternally. And then he strictly tells them to tell no one that he was the Christ. And uh, it just simply wasn't the time. There are times when believers are to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. The greatest message in the world is that Jesus is the Christ, but that was not the time. Uh, he, he, he had, uh, things had to go a certain way, 
and uh, we'll look at that as well. Anyway, there's a lot to unpack this Sunday. I'm not sure we're going to get through the whole text together this Sunday. It might be a two-Sunday text. We will see as the studies progress. Please keep me in your prayers, and we'll see you on Sunday. Thank you.